It is completely discouraging to hold a word in sight and see it spin around, pair it with others, join a constellation like a string of beads. In fact, it escapes you like a ball on a playground. Others play with it cheerfully, but what are they playing at? What's their game? It's a mystery. In a world that prioritizes and demands conformity and uniformity, Neurodiversity is a paradigm shift that seeks to embrace the uniqueness of individuals with various diverse neurological conditions. This perspective recognizes that neurological differences such as autism, ADHD, and dyslexia are natural variations of the human brain, rather than deficits that need to be fixed. Embracing neurodiversity encourages us to explore alternative approaches to understanding and supporting neurodiverse youth. Two conceptual frameworks that offer intriguing possibilities for this exploration are Fernand Delaney's Wanderlines and Gil Deleuze and Felix Guattari's Schizoanalysis. The neurodiversity movement has its origins in the early 1990s emerging from the work of Australian sociologist and autism advocate Judy Singer. Singer was diagnosed with autism herself and wanted to challenge the prevailing medical model of viewing neurological conditions as disorders to be cured or normalized. While the term neurodiversity initially focused on autism, it now encompasses a wide range of neurological conditions, including ADHD, dyslexia, Tourette syndrome, and more. The neurodiversity perspective encourages society to recognize and accommodate the unique strengths and challenges associated with these conditions. Delaney's largest contributions were his conceptual frameworks, that of positive maladjustment, a pedagogy of poetics, and his wander or trace lines, lines de foot. Positive maladjustment was Delaney's response to childhood and youth being the targets of capitalism, seen as tools rather than humans. After watching autistic youth after youth be labeled and encapsulated as useless, misfit, incurable, unbearable, and throwaway, Delaney began to take up research in anthropology and art rather than psychology or social work with a goal of revealing the positivity of maladjustment. Delaney's Pedagogy of Poetics was a radical departure from traditional education in that it emphasized the importance and understanding of the unique ways that neurodiverse individuals interact with their world and express themselves. Delaney was interested in examining the effects of language rather than an over-pathologization of mutism in autism. Delaney's concept of murderous language exposed the ways in which traditional language, in particular with autistic children, was used to create difference, oppression, and pathologization of youth that struggled to communicate with traditional verbal means. Delaney's wander lines, or lines de foot, were maps or drawings created by following the movements of autistic individuals as they wandered freely in their environments. These wander lines are visual and nonverbal means of representing the movements and behaviors of autistic individuals and those with different communications. They emphasize autonomy, individualization, and the importance of embracing alternative forms of expression. Delaney's wander lines have contributed to a more inclusive, and respectful approach to understanding and supporting neurodiverse individuals and challenging traditional diagnostic and therapeutic paradigms. At the core, Delaney was fighting for a freedom for neurodiverse youth to be in the world in a way where they could communicate and interact in ways that respected their autonomy and unique perspectives. Converging alongside the work of Fernand Delaney, was Deleuze and Guattari's work of schizoanalysis. Schizoanalysis was an alternative approach in response to traditional psychoanalysis, which Deleuze and Guattari felt was pathologized and medicalized, and looked at differences in thought and behavior as something to be dissected. Schizoanalysis, rather, sought to explore the multiplistic nature of subjectivity and the unique thought and behavior expressions of all human beings. 
Schizoanalysis aligns well with the principles of neurodiversity because it rejects the notions of a standardized or normative psyche. Rather, it can offer an acceptance and curiosity about the fluid and diverse nature of the human experience, providing a more inclusive and empathic understanding of neurodiverse youth. Schizoanalysis extended beyond the individual psyche to analyze social and political structures. Considering how societal forces, including capitalism and authoritarianism, impact individual subjectivities and desires, it challenged traditional models of power and control. At the core of schizoanalysis was also rhizomatic thinking, embracing a rhizomatic mode of thinking, which is non-hierarchical and non-linear. Instead of following a fixed linear path, it explores interconnected networks of ideas and experiences, allowing for a more fluid and open understanding of subjectivity and desire. The convergence of Delaney's wonder lines and Deleuze and Guattari's schizoanalysis offers a promising framework for supporting neurodiverse youth with respecting autonomy, valuing difference, creative expression, community building, and deep amounts of empathy and understanding. Delaney and Deleuze and Guattari's work offer alternative lenses through which we can understand and support neurodiverse youth. It is critical that we challenge traditional approaches that pathologize and medicalize neurological differences. Instead, we must embrace diversity value individual subjectivities and create inclusive environments that celebrate the unique ways in which neurodiverse individuals navigate and experience the world. In doing so, we move closer to a world where neurodiversity is not just accepted, but celebrated as an essential part of the human experience.